Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today I received an email that said Starlink has now gone portable. We knew this was coming. We didn't really have any of the details, but now we know those details. We know the costs. We know the ins and outs of the portability. So we're gonna talk about all of that in this video. However, first, if you have not subscribed to Crosstalk Solutions, make sure you do so down below and click that like button while you're at it. You can also follow us on Twitter at CrosstalkSOL for all of the latest updates. So let's jump right into this email that I received this morning. Starlink is excited to announce portability as an add-on feature for all Starlink customers. Portability enables customers to temporarily move their Starlink to new locations and re receive high-speed internet anywhere where Starlink provides active coverage within the same continent. To see active coverage areas, please view the Starlink availability map. And we're gonna look at that in just a second. You can enable portability for $25 per month on your account page. So this is new. I did not realize that there was going to be a cost associated with portability, but again, we will talk about that. Once enabled, portability will take effect immediately and you can disable portability from your account page at any time. And to learn more about Starlink portability, please read our fact page. So we're gonna get to that. Uh, let's first take a look at this availability map. So here we can see the Starlink availability map. This is available at starlink.com slash map. And we have two different types of availability. We have available, which is this brighter green, and then the sort of more muted green is the wait list. And what you're gonna very quickly realize is that the wait list is basically anywhere where there's people, <laughs> right? Where there's a lot of people. So any city, you could see up and down the west coast over here, which is where I live, uh, any, anything down the five here, there's basically not a lot of coverage. Uh, and again, it's because Starlink is made to service folks that are in moral, more rural locations uh, first. But how does the availability relate to portability? Well, let's take a look at the FAQ page. So what is Starlink's portability feature and policy? For an additional monthly fee, the portability feature enables users to temporarily move their Starlink to new locations in order to receive service anywhere within the same continent Starlink provides active coverage. Uh, then we can say, look at the map. Portable users are served best effort and can expect lower service levels than fixed users, particularly in areas marked as waitlist on the availability map. So that means if you're out here and you live in Portland and you go out here to Hood River to go camping, when you go portable with your Starlink, you are at the bottom of the list, right? Anyone that pays for Starlink and is their home base is in that area, their non-portable home address is in that area, they are going to receive priority over your Starlink connection. How much of that is really gonna be affected? I don't know. I mean, if you're out there camping in the middle of the wilderness and you're used to getting Starlink at 150 megabits and now you're only getting 70 megabits, I mean, who cares, right? That's not that much of a difference. But I think more than anything, saying that users that are in sort of portable mode away from their home address get lower priority on the Starlink network is probably just a way to dissuade people from taking advantage of the portability feature to get Starlink earlier, right? Because as we all know, there is a wait list for Starlink. Sometimes it's up to a year. Sometimes people get their Starlink dishes really quickly. There's like no rhyme or reason to how people receive their dishes or when they receive them after they place their initial order. But imagine a situation where you have a relative or a friend who is in a non-waitlist area and then you contact them and say, hey, order Starlink to your home address, I will pay for it. And then when you get it, I'm gonna move it to my home address and we're just gonna say that we're portable, right? And now it's just an extra 25 bucks a month to do that. That's definitely something that people will do. You know, a lot of people are clamoring for Starlink. They wanna get it. And if you're in an area, you know, that's kind of rural, but still on the wait list, I'm sure $25 additional per month is not gonna be any sort of massive barrier. Not to mention that you could do that scheme, right? Have someone order it in a non-wait list area. When they receive it, you take it and make it portable and then change your home address. 
right? I'm sure you could do that too. And then the 25 bucks a month goes away as well. I don't know how Starlink is gonna prevent stuff like that from happening, but I can 100% guarantee you that stuff like that will happen. All right, so add portability on your account. If you are an active customer, you can enable portability from your account page and it will take effect immediately. If you have multiple Starlinks, portability must be selected and purchased for each location. And then they talk about sort of the fee, right? When you enable portability, you are charged in your next monthly invoice. Portability is charged in full monthly increments and cannot be prorated. The portability feature and billing charges will be ongoing until you disable it. Once you disable portability, the recurring charge will stop after your next monthly invoice and portability will only remain active for the remainder of the current billing cycle. For example, if you enable portability on March 12th and your next billing date is on April 1st, you will be charged $25 on April 1st for the full previous month. So again, they're saying, we don't care when you enable portability. If you turn portability on for five minutes in the month of May, on June 1st, you're getting a $25 charge for that, right? Which honestly, as far as the charge goes for portability, I don't think it's any crazy barrier, right? So I think of it like this. I have Starlink at home. If I'm gonna go camping for a week, you know, out in the wilderness, out here in the Pacific Northwest, and I need to have internet access while I'm out there, I can enable portability and then disable it almost immediately. And I have the ability to make my Starlink portable through the end of the month. Or in other words, if I'm gonna be gone for a week, the cost for me to have my Starlink dish out at this remote location for a week is $25. Okay, so that's not that bad, right? I would gladly pay $25 to have internet at a place where I normally would not have any internet for an entire week, right? So that's kind of the way that I'm looking at the fees. If you leave portability on and forget to disable it, well, that's on you. Okay, limitations, best effort service, portability services provided on a best effort basis. Stated speeds and uninterrupted use of services are not guaranteed. Starlink prioritizes network resources for users at the registered service address. When you bring your Starlink to a new location, this prioritization may result in degraded service, particularly at times of peak usage or network congestion. So again, I don't know how much that's gonna affect your actual Starlink connection. There's no data on that yet. But I think this is more to dissuade people from sort of scamming uh, Starlink into getting their dishes early. International travel, they're saying Starlink can only be used within the same continent. And it says if you use Starlink in a foreign country for more than two months, you will be required to move your registered service address to your new location or purchase an additional Starlink to maintain service. And finally, this is a big question for people, no in motion use, okay? So that means people that have RVs, people that have boats and they want Starlink on the boat. We do not support Starlink use in motion at this time. Using the Starlink kit in motion will void the limited warranty of your kit. While our teams are actively working to make it possible to use Starlink on moving vehicles, for example, automobiles, RVs, and boats, Starlink is not yet configured to be safely used in this way. And I think I've heard, maybe you guys know, put it down in the comments. I believe I have seen you know, either Reddit posts or, you know, Twitter chatter about people who have successfully used Starlink on a, like a moving RV or on a boat. Um, but again, they're basically saying this for liability reasons. Hey, it, you can't use it when you're on a boat yet, right? We're not there yet. And likely what will happen is when they do have a, you know, in motion version of Starlink, it'll probably be a completely different dish or a completely different type of dish. Like they might actually encase it in like a radome or whatever so that, you know, the moving parts and the dish as it's moving, you know, you can't get your hands in there and, and sort of like there's no liability in terms of like injuries and stuff like that. That would be my guess is that when they, they, they're gonna come out with an in motion version of Starlink that's different from the one that you can purchase today. Again, total speculation on my part, but that's probably what they're gonna do knowing Starlink. All right, so one related question here. Does Starlink portability replace the need for changing service addresses? No, although Starlink portability enables users to use their Starlink terminal in other locations, users will have less priority on the network. If you are going to be in a different area for an extended period of time, Starlink requires you to change your registered service address location to ensure the best experience. 
and they don't state what is considered to be an extended period of time. My guess would be probably something like two to three months would be, would you know, again, that's just, again, speculation on my part. Users who stay in the same service area outside their service address location for an extended period of time may see a further decrease in performance to accommodate users at their service address. Okay, so they've made Starlink portable. There are a few rules surrounding the use of a portable Starlink dish. I don't think the use, uh, the, the sort of rules that they've come up with are any barrier to making your Starlink portable. I do fear that a lot of people are going to abuse this system and again, here's how it works, right? You have a friend or family member that lives in an area that's not on a Starlink waiting list. You contact them, they order Starlink to that home address, you then make it portable and move it to your address and then you change your home address location to your own address. Okay, so worst case scenario, you've probably spent one month worth of $25 charges to make it portable and now you have bypassed the waiting list for your area. Okay, so I don't see anything in this FAQ or documentation that's gonna prevent people from doing that. Uh, so that would be my only concern with the portability. And then presumably, if you did do that and you change your home address successfully to a waitlist location, you're no longer on the sort of deprioritized bandwidth list, right? You, that's now your home service address. So you would have the same priority as everyone else who has that same home service address, right? So again, a way to game the system. I'm not sure I really agree with that, but uh, yeah, I'm sure there are gonna be people that, people that take advantage of it. Okay, so what do you guys think about Starlink portability? Are you still on a waiting list? And would you consider having someone buy one for you that's not on a waiting list and then shipping it to you and then changing the home service address? Is that something you would even consider doing? Put that all down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.